So let's talk about the inspiration behind Aquapax and your journey leading up to launching the brand. You know, how did you get Aquapax off the ground and, and what was the inspiration behind it? Yeah, complex, uh, but fundamentally it goes back to who I am. You know, I grew up um, as a kiddie surfing the beaches on the east coast of Africa, South Africa, Durban. And uh, in the de- in those were the days before plastic, so the beaches, the beaches were clean. And then by the time in my late teens, early 20s, you, you couldn't walk along a beach after a high tide or a storm without finding bits of plastic. Yeah. And in those days, it was more of a, an interesting observation. But you know, la- later in life, it became a real thing for me that there aren't any clean beaches left. So that's the motivation fundamentally is somebody had to do something. I was working in the water industry, so I knew a lot about water quality and um, just put the two together, the, the environmental uh, passion f- with, uh, with the water quality passion indeed. And uh, voila, Aquapax. Aquapax was born. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. It's all about research to get a product off the ground, though. And yeah. that, that bit's boring. You don't want to know too much about that. Oh, we can touch on that. <laughs> so in regards yeah. to... Yeah, let's, let's do touch on that. I mean, the, the research for, you know, entrepreneurs listening in, mm. what is... what prior to launching Aquapax, what, what were the key you know, elements of research that you had, to, you, had, you had to do? Or was it just throwing yourself in at the deep end uh, and learning as you go or, you know? Elements of both. I mean, my, my training uh, is I'm a marketing professional, so defining a market is, is, is fundamental. But when you're the first mover in a market, your market segment doesn't exist. So you're looking at a global market. Well, the global market for bottled water, it's an economic phenomenon and an ecological catastrophe. So the market's just multiple billions per annum of both litres and dollars. So that wasn't an issue, defining the market. More of a challenge was defining which segment of the market Aquapax would appeal to. Yeah. So, and that came down to blind faith. You know, if you look at the design on an Aquapax, you see the birds migrating at the top of the pack. And I just genuinely thought that people who get it will get it. And just like a bird, when it's time to migrate, starts flying, those people will gravitate to Aquapax. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, it's, the design actually is perfectly sums up what yeah. you just said in regards to migrating. Did My you life find... in a box. <laughs> yeah. Did you find Aquapax when it was sitting on the shelf on its own? Yeah, as you say, being a first mover, when it was sitting on the shelf on its own, did you find did you find it tough? You know, was it? It's uh, tough when you've only got one facing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you need to make a statement as any product. So, but when you're the first in a category, you tend to only get one facing because retail's pretty brutal. Mm. So, so that was tricky, but still we, we attracted customers from, from day one and we still have those customers. So um, that's been super rewarding. I mean, Waitrose, for instance, how long have you been with Waitrose? Been supplying Waitrose since 2009, since I went to them for advice on yeah. what do they recommend that I do with the product. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And so, yeah, they were well ahead of the curve with you, really. Yeah, yeah, they were. I mean, we weren't in as many stores as we are now. And even now, we're not in every single Waitrose, but, um, which is why Amazon was necessary, so that we could distribute right across the UK and indeed Europe. So they give that breadth. But um, yeah, as retailers go, Waitrose, Waitrose were the first 